Improving your score on multiple choice question tests comes down to two points. How much do you know and how good are you at answering questions? In today's video, I'm going to teach you a very simple technique to improve the latter. So let's get to it. So you're in the exam and a difficult question pops up. What do you do? A. Go for the longest choice. B. Go for the more convoluted choice. C. Run for your life. D. Go for C of Christ, the Lord and Savior. Well, whenever that happens to me, I use a technique I like to call the three R's, which stands for resist, rule out, and realize. First thing that you absolutely have to do is to resist. Because when we encounter these types of questions, our first impulse, for many of us at least, is to just say, what the f are they asking me this? and guess at the answer. So you have to resist that temptation. And I know that this may be hard for some of you impulsive folks out there like me, but just stop, take a breath, and realize that by just thinking for a couple of minutes, you can dramatically increase your probabilities of getting the question right. After you're committed to resist that initial temptation, the next thing you have to do is to start ruling out. The key here is to have an argument for why you're ruling out each choice. Just going by feeling is not reliable enough. You have to make the case, even a weak case, for why you don't think that option is correct. I personally use the script theory to make my arguments here. The theory states that most concepts have a typical way of showing up in exams. For example, in medicine, the script of type 1 diabetes is of a young patient with the 5 Ps. If the question heading shows me an old patient, I immediately rule out type 1 diabetes since it doesn't reflect that script. And the thing you have to understand in general about multiple choice question tests is that they're not asking you for what it could be, but of among these choices, what is the most likely to be. So the script theory usually works in these types of scenarios. Now, after you rule out everything you could, you pass on to the final R, which is realizing that the few things you know can probably give you hints and make you get to the right choice, even though at first you may feel clueless about it. All you have to do is ask yourself two questions with each of the choices. What do I know and would it make sense? For example, let's say that this question pops up on your exam and you don't know why the hell did this woman develop bradycardia after CO2 insufflation. Don't panic, in fact, you don't even need to know what CO2 insufflation is to get the question right. All you have to do is to ask yourself those two questions with each of the choices. So let's get to it. First choice, CO2 embolization. What do I know about CO2 embolization? Well, I don't know about that topic specifically, but I do know a bit about pulmonary embolization, and I'm damn sure that when a patient gets a PE, he gets tachycardic, not bradycardic. So probably this is not the correct choice, since I know that another type of similar embolization causes the opposite, so I'm ruling out this one. Now, second choice, vena cava compression. What do I know about this? Well, I know that the vena cava carries blood to the heart, and if it gets compressed, less blood gets to the heart. Less preload means less cardiac output. And I know that the heart tries at all costs to maintain cardiac output. And the easiest way to do so is to increase its heart rate. So would it make sense for the heart to become bradycardic when the cardiac output drops? No. So ruled out. And you get the point by now. Eventually, you would get to the peritoneal stretching option. And if you just remember that the peritoneum is innervated by the vagus nerve and that the vagus nerve causes bradycardia, you would link those two together and voila, you would have the correct choice. Now, what I wanted you to realize is that in order to get the question right, I didn't need to know what CO2 insufflation was or how it may come about to cause any of those choices. The only three things I needed to know were that a PE causes tachycardia, that the heart tries to maintain cardiac output at all costs, mainly by increasing its heart rate, and that the peritoneum is innervated by the vagus nerve and that it causes bradycardia. Most first year medical students probably know a couple of those concepts already. So that's the trick. Teach your mind to use the few things you know to make sense of everything you don't. Does it work all the time? No, but hey, if you can get a couple extra questions right just by thinking for a couple of minutes, isn't that worth a try? Anyways, that was it for the video. If you liked it and want me to continue uploading free content such as this one for you, all you need to do is subscribe, like, and leave a comment. That really helps me to know which content do you like the most and keep posting videos about it. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video.